Hi guys, welcome back to AFTV and welcome back to Transfer Daily Extra. We've done one of these on Albert Sambu Lakonga, who's on the brink of becoming an Arsenal player. And we've got another player. I mean, it, it sounds crazy. We've had such a quiet summer in terms of the transfer window. Uh, but here we are doing another Transfer Daily Extra. Where we're going to take a deep dive look at another player who looks on the brink and that is Nuno Tavares, the young Portuguese left back coming from Benfica. They're saying it's going to be about an £8 million deal. And look, he's going to be an Arsenal player. I mean, I think that's pretty much uh, certain now, whether he's holding the shirt or not. And we'll have the welcome video for him as well. Or depends when you're watching this, that might even be out already. Um, but here we're just going to have a little look at Tavares, what he could be bringing to Arsenal. And why, um, I think why we should be excited about this deal. Why maybe we should be a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say sceptical, that's harsh. But um, just maybe not have the highest expectations yet. He's still young, he's still a very raw player. Um, I think we're getting a player with bags of potential. Uh, but will he be the finished article? Who knows? I'm just glad we're getting a, a proper cover for Kieran Tierney. He's someone who's got a young profile, he's going to be here for many years to come. It's only going to get better. Let's go into it by starting with his player profile. Here it is on your screens. Age 21 years old, still very young. I think there's a we're in danger of sometimes thinking of 21 as yet ready to contribute, ready to have an immediate impact, but that's not always the case. Yeah, a lot of players, especially defenders, mature really from 25, 26 onwards. You know, they do a lot of their learnings in that kind of mid 20s. It, you know, there's a reason you're seeing Chiellini and Bonucci do what they do at the Euros because. Uh, defender centre backs look at John Terry for another one, Rio Ferdinand. They can play well into their 30s. So, you know, he's still very, very young. And I'm not expecting him to come in and play 30, 40 games a season for Arsenal, especially with no Europe. But he's a good age. He's a good age where he's had a lot, plenty of experience and he's ready to contribute immediately if needed. Left footed player, obviously, he's a left back. Well, I say that, not all left backs. Um, you know, Spinazzola at the Euros. We've seen Cedric play left back for us. They're not all left-footed, but he is a left-footed left-back. Uh, he's played left-back. He's even played right-back a little bit as well. He's even played as a left-back, left-wing-back. So he, he, he's covered a few different positions. He's made 41 appearances in the Benfica first team, scoring one goal and registering seven assists in that time. Now, let's go into Nuno Tavares in a bit more detail. As you saw with the Lokonga video, I went into sort of uh, the football manager stats, what they're saying. I'm not going to dive too deeply into their numbers. Obviously, they, they, you know, football managers like to give a rating out of 20. Um, I want to do something a bit different with Nuno Tavares today. I want to look at him more in terms of his strengths and weaknesses because, as I said, he is a raw player. But I think it's in, it's important we understand what he's good at, where maybe his weaknesses are, but where the system that we've been deploying under Arteta could maybe get the best out of him. So let's start with the strengths. Let's start. Let's start on a high. Let's start with the good stuff. Where I think Tavares really excels is physically. I mean, you look at him, he's six foot tall. And I think what's really interesting about that is a lot of the defenders that Arteta has been bringing into the club are over six foot. I don't think Cedric is, in fairness. But uh, Mary, Gabriel, he's been playing Chambers a lot as well. And I think a big part of that, as well as the arrival of the new set-piece coach from Manchester City, but also um, we had Andreas Jorsen, who came in from Brentford last summer. That seems an area that Arteta is very keen on having a specialist in. I mean, look, for all I know, all other clubs do too. I'm sure they do. But my point is, I think it was an area you could tell Arsenal really worked on. Attacking-wise, you know, we saw that sort of system with sort of putting a lot of players around the, goal, uh, the, the opposition goalkeeper. And defensively as well, I did think we improved. And the fact that he's a six-foot left-back... I a lot of left backs in this modern day and age they they're more about sort of being very dynamic maybe a bit more nimble maybe a bit more agile i think tavares has all that but with the height to go with it so it's a small detail you guys might be thinking you know what, what's the point talking about it's too much but i do think having a bit of height and presence is something that arteta is very keen on especially in his back four so tavares absolutely fits the bill with that his other strengths we've got down here is acceleration fitness pace stamina and apparently bravery as well which um i wasn't sure how you measured that i suppose he's not one to shy from a challenge but that is a good thing in itself tavares if you're looking at sort of what the what the football manager database what you know what, maybe what the fifa rate i mean we looked at fifa um and, and even just watching youtube videos or, or watching him i mean obviously saw him for benfica against arsenal physically he's very impressive you know as um, we mentioned he's tall but he's very fast he's got good acceleration he's a decent ball carrier as well dribbling wasn't one of the attributes that was considered his best but you look at his just highlights and he looks a very confident ball carry he likes to drive through that's something I think that Arsenal are going to try and use a lot when we have him and we're going to look at how the system might suit that quite well in, in a second let's touch on his weaknesses though as well um, and this isn't to disc you know as I say he's 21 he's going to improve on these things it's not 
it's it, we're not trying to criticize him or, or tell you guys to worry he'll improve in these areas but there are areas that he's considered not the best in at the moment that i think maybe again when we play him we're going to have to have a system that maybe looks out for these things Supposedly he's not the best header of the ball, so for everything I've just said about him being six foot, his heading's supposedly not the best. Questions about his first touch, marking, positioning, and I've got finishing in there as well, but let's face it, he's not there to necessarily be the best finisher. He's considered a very decent crosser of the ball though. So we touched on some strengths, we touched on some weaknesses. Let's have a little look at how he could fit maybe into the Arsenal system, what Arteta's been doing. Let's have a little look at the tactical pad here. So, I've gone for a starting 11 based on, well, quite frankly, who's even left at the club. I mean, most of them are at the Euros, on holiday, not back yet, on their way out. If they're not on their way out, they want to leave. I mean, it's all a bit of a mess. So, I've gone with 11 players that I can safely say are going to be at the club next year and playing some sort of first-team football. Now, as you can see here, we've got Kieran Tierney as the left-back. Before we talk about Tavares coming in, I want to look at how Arsenal have been lining up typically with Tierney as their left-back when they've been giving him the licence to get forward. Now... What we've been seeing is Kieran Tierney, as we've got him here, coming right up the pitch. Gabriel, Rob Holding, and then Callum Chambers, especially towards the end of that season, forming much more of a back three in the build-up. The back three in the build-up is something that Arteta has been desperate to do ever since he joined the club, really. Whether it was Maitland-Niles playing as the inverted fullback, then Granite Jacker used to drop into the back three. We've seen a lot of different kind of iterations of this, but the point is he wants three in the build-up. Bakayo Saka comes quite wide, Smith Rowe and then El Elneny or Partey, depending which one's the more advanced, will basically come forward and they'll almost be, let's say, one distributor, one deep line playmaker. Now normally where El Elneny is here, who I'm highlighting, might be a Sabahs, which is why I think you're seeing us linked to players like Alwa and other players who maybe have a little bit more, let's say, flair, a little bit more dynamism, a little bit more... I don't know, something about them in the final third that can make them dangerous. So I don't see El Nenny being that starting central midfielder alongside Partey. I mean, maybe it'll be the other way around where El Nenny here is going to be the distributor and Partey will be box to box. In fairness, that would make a lot more sense. So looking at this system here, which is what we've seen Arsenal do quite often. I mean, I've not even highlighted Martinelli, who would really be playing on the shoulder along with Aubameyang. We've talked about Tierney here. Now, what Arsenal have tried to do you know, in the absence of Kieran Tierney when he's had his injuries, is a couple of things. If I just put Kieran Tierney over here onto the subs bench, and I scroll along, where is Granite Jacka? Let's have a little look for him as I pull Martinelli out the team. Here we go, Granite Jacka. So if I put Granite Jacka at left back, which is where he was playing a lot at the end of the season, the system starts to look slightly different, where Chambers is basically coming along and holding the width, holding. And Gabriel are still part of the build-up, but they shift along. And it's Granite Jacker who comes along into the back three there. And basically, everything shifts slightly. You've got Martinelli who's hugging the touchline. And then otherwise, it's a very similar thing. But Saka's playing a lot more centrally. But I think what happened was, with Granite Jacker coming in as the filler, because Cedric was quite awkward in that left-hand side, wasn't able to offer down the left what Tierney did, I think what happened, he basically switched everyone's roles and the team almost flipped. And I think Arteta is very keen on that left side being where he ultimately overloads and dominates, which is why we've been saying seeing Smith Rowe as kind of a wide number 10 on that side with Tierney as the left-back. If we bring everyone back into place, we put Granite Jacker on the subs bench here, and bring on Tavares, there is our new signing, well, soon to be new signing. I think that's where you maintain the balance and the loss of Kieran Tierney through injury. We know he's going to get them, we just hope they're not going to be lengthy ones, that he's going to be all right and have pretty much a full season under his belt. When Tavares will come in, though, it's not a big change or a big shock to the system in, some, in terms of what we do tactically. And we noticed in that Villarreal in that semi-final, when Granit Xhaka got injured and Kieran Tierney had to come on because Xhaka got injured in the warm-up, Tierney was playing as one of the, the build-up sort of back three and he struggled. He couldn't do it. He wasn't marauding forward as he would normally. And I think that was a big problem. So I think having like for likes is going to be crucial for Arsenal. If we just take, uh, well, let's shift this all along again. Tavares comes up to hold the width. Martinelli in for a Bamiang, or in with a Bamiang even. Gabriel holding Chambers as the building back three. Saka holds the width. And then you're pretty much in that similar sort of 3-5-2 shape. And that's where Tavares here, I'm just going to highlight right here. I think that is where he's going to have a lot of fun getting up and down and basically just using his pace, using his power, being that marauding fullback. And I think this is a system with Gabriel covering that is going to help cover 
some of those weaknesses we touched on heading maybe positioning we talked about marking i don't think that's gonna be so much of a problem if he's given the same license that kieran Tierney was given now i want to touch on something else watching some of his highlights and having watched him a little bit where i think i think where i think nuno tavares can also be a real threat now under arteta we saw this at man city as well the cutback was a big thing that arsenal tried to do when they're getting to that full, uh, you know, to that byline, the, the fullbacks are getting forward. You don't find it just sort of aimlessly smashed into the box. There seems to be a degree of calculated method, calculated football when they get to that area. Now put Tavares in this position here, and what you're going to see quite often, I think, or what you do see, I've got Martinelli there. Sometimes it'll be Smith Rowe out on the left with um, obviously Tierney overlapping. But I've used Tavares and Martinelli for now. What we've been seeing is. A lot of overlapping, getting to that byline, not just smashing it into the box, as we're going to see here. Martinelli puts it in. They get into this area. You can see a Bamian coming in. Not just smashing it into that area, which obviously you'd hope there's a tap in, but actually what we've been seeing a lot more of is a cutback here. Finding that late runner into the box, hopefully should have a wider view of the goal, a better idea of where they want to put it. Also, you're catching the other defenders on the back foot. That is something Nuno Tavares, again, from highlights a bit, I've been watching him, uh, where I've been watching him, he seems to have a good eye for a late run, a good eye for what's going on. He's got the creativity, he's got the execution in his cross. Uh, but but more, more than anything, he's got the pace to get there and make these moves happen quickly because it's important that when you get into those areas, the defenders don't have a chance to reset. If you're playing the kind of ball that forces the defenders all the way back, only to then cut it back again, you're causing loads of problems. And I think that's where Tavares can be a really good light for like when it comes to Kieran Tini getting injured, Tavares coming in and not having to change what we do too much. So look guys, we tried to break down a little bit of what we might see him doing in an Arsenal shirt, where his strengths are, where his weaknesses are. Obviously there's a bit of, um, I wouldn't call it tension with Benfica fans, but you know, Nuno Tavares, I don't know if he's leaving on, on the best terms. I think there's some stuff said about Grimaldo. I don't know if all of them particularly rate him, whereas others have said, listen, in the final third going forward, he's a brilliant option, he's got loads of potential. I'm just gonna focus on the positive because he's a young player and he's gonna learn and develop and it doesn't happen overnight, especially for defenders and fullbacks. So I'm really interested to see what we get from him. I'm just delighted that, you know what, he fits the profile. I love his athleticism. I love that we're getting players who can run. Sometimes football is just about having that a little bit more physically than your opposition and he's got that we know Kieran Tierney offers that too so I think we're getting a real like for like is he as good as Kieran Tierney time will tell I don't think he is at the moment but he's got the potential to be one day we hope yeah it's been good talking about it guys go check out the Albert Sambu Lukonga transfer daily extra as well where I broke down where he could be good in the build up for us and where he could maybe play a role in the midfield alongside Thomas Partey we're going to be doing one on Ben White as well soon and we think it's going to be an Arsenal player and listen anyone who looks like they're coming through the door I'll be here for 10-15 minutes to analyse it on transfer daily extra thank you for joining don't forget to look out for AFTV VIP links in the description below go check out all the other content we're doing on AFTV and if you see this before the end of the finals of the Euros everything from Euros, it's just the final left, but we've covered everything on Don Robbie as well, so check that out as well. Thank you for watching, we'll catch you on the next one.